Getting TEFL jobs and getting hired as a non-native speaker can be pretty tough. I, uh, you probably don't need me to tell you that there is a widespread preference among recruiters for those perceived as native speaker teachers. But despite all this prejudice and despite all this preference, you can get hired as a non-native speaker and you can become very, very successful. And I don't mean just once or twice, but I really mean getting hired consistently and repeatedly. Imagine what it would mean to you. And let me know below this video, how would you feel if you could get TEFL jobs practically anywhere you want in the world? If you could learn a step-by-step -step process that would allow you to do that and you could put into practice and refine and make better. And in this video, I want to outline to you exactly the seven steps that you need to take as a non-native speaker starting today in order to get hired. So let's get started. Before we start, just a little disclaimer. If you are out there looking for a magic pill or a button that you can simply press and get hired as a non-native speaker, this video is not for you. You can already um, turn it off and move on somewhere else. If you're not willing to put in the work, change how you apply for jobs as a non-native speaker, learn and, and improve, this video is not for you. Something like a magic pill or a button that you can press to get jobs as a non-native speaker does not exist. It's going to take a lot of hard work but you can do this. How do I know this? Because I've gone through that process myself and I've trained other non-native speakers and I've helped them achieve exactly that. So let me break down this whole process for you into seven easy to follow steps. Step number one, learn more about native speakerism. You really need to know your enemy in order to be able to beat it. And your enemy is not the language schools, the recruiters, the students, the native speakers. No, it's the, it's the ideology of native speakerism. It's this idea that is so deeply ingrained in our field that native speakers, any native speaker makes a better teacher than any non-native speaker can ever dream of becoming. So it's really, really important that you understand the ideology of native speakerism, how it works and how it's perpetuated so you can be better prepared to tackle it uh, when you apply for jobs. And if you're interested, I made another video uh, where I specifically talk a lot about um, native speakerism. So you might find it useful. Um, number two, step number two is you need to really understand why native speakers are not better teachers. Okay, in here, if you're a native speaker watching this, I don't mean to say that native speakers are bad teachers, no. What I wanna say is that being a native speaker doesn't make you a better teacher, even though so many people believe it. And you as a non-native speaker need to understand it for two reasons. Reason number one, is that you really need to boost your confidence. You need to go into those interviews and job application process knowing 100% that you can succeed as a non-native speaker and not worrying about this idea that native speakers are better suited for the job. The reason number two is that you need to explain it to people. You will need to explain it to potential clients, you will need to explain it to recruiters, because many of the, them will question you and, and you will hear statements from them like, well, but don't you think native speakers are better at teaching pronunciation? So you need to learn how to address this issue. Step number three that you need to take to really start getting hired as a non-native speaker is to understand the strengths that you've got because we've been talking so much about this idea that native speakers are better teachers that we tend to forget that no, as non-native speakers, we have an array of fantastic um, quality skills, characteristics that we need to start using to market um, ourselves, to, to sell ourselves, to get TEFL jobs. Just to give you one example, um, by the virtue of, being, of having learned English, you are able to instinctively probably understand the struggles your students are going through. You've developed 
techniques that can help your students overcome the very same problems that you've been struggling with. So why not use this advantage in your cover letter? Why not use it on your CV? Why not use it in the job interview to get TEFL jobs? Step number four is to really, really take a good, hard look at your professional profile. Um, you might be thinking that, you know, when you get rejected from uh, job ads by recruiters, it's because you're a non-native speaker. Sometimes it might be, but very often, believe me, I've worked with a lot of non-native speakers who have sent me their CVs, their LinkedIn profiles, and I've tried to help them improve them. Very often, the reasons can be completely different. You really have to take a look at how you present yourself professionally. For example, um, have you got a, a really good updated LinkedIn profile? If you don't, then go and get it right now because research shows that over 60% of recruiters, the first thing that they will do is look you up on social media. They will Google your name. And what are they going to find? Are they going to find your Facebook profile maybe with some unprofessional pictures on it? Or are they going to find your LinkedIn page where you, for example, show videos of yourself teaching, where you publish articles um, and so on? Right? So take a good hard look at your professional profile. Step number five is to really learn how to apply for jobs well. Again, you might be thinking that you get rejected for jobs only because you're a non-native speaker. And sometimes this is true. But oftentimes it's also because, for example, how your CV looks. And believe me, I've seen dozens and dozens of CVs in the past couple of weeks from non-native speakers who I help improve their CVs and there is a lot to be desired there. So just to give you a couple of tips, um, keep your CV short to one page. Don't make it very long. Don't make it in Microsoft Word, um, which will make your CV look really ugly and unprofessional. Uh, don't put your first language or your nationality on your CV because as soon as the recruiter sees that, they'll a lot of them will go like, no, I don't even want to look at that CV and they'll throw it to the bin, right? So these are just a couple of tips. If you're interested in more tips, then check out the links below this video. Step number six is to really never give up and be persistent. And you might be thinking, well, what's a silly piece of advice? But no, really, it's really, really important. Recently, I had a LinkedIn conversation with a non-native speaker who was asking me how I managed to find a job in Belgium. And she said that she's been here for a couple of years and she still can't find a job as an English teacher. And I asked her, you know, who did you apply to? How did you apply? And she said that she applied to a couple of um, schools that I, um, that I knew. Um, and then I said, well, did they ever reply to you? And she was like, no, no, they didn't. So what did you do next? And she was like, nothing. And you see, this is this is the problem. And I understand where it's coming from because you know you might not feel confident. Maybe you're thinking, okay, they didn't reply to me. That's it. Uh, job application process ended. No, follow up. You know, don't be a stalker and send them an email every day. But in a week or two weeks, follow up, send them another email. Or if you're in the same city, even better, just drop by in the school and have a chat um, with the receptionist. And you don't know, you might be even able to get a chat with one of the senior teachers or another teacher at that school. Uh, so never, never give up. And the last step, guys, the last step is to simply re reflect on this process, repeat it and refine it. Just as any process, the first time, it might be difficult, but if you're able to um, notice what you did well, what you need to work on, reflect on it, and then repeat it, you will refine this process every single time and get better at it. So in this video, I gave you the seven easy to follow steps that you need to do right now in order to start getting jobs as a non-native speaker. If you want more information like this, then check out the links below this video and also join TEFL Equity Academy and I posted the link right below.